All right, welcome. I'm the Zim, host of Word on the Street, but you already know that because the only reason you're watching this video is to find out what you need to do to be considered as a guest on Word on the Street podcast. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, and this is um, the first version of it. We'll see. It might change over time, but for now, it's, um, I don't know what the date is, April 11th, 2016. And this is the, the thoughts that I've had and I want to let you know because I'm getting more requests from people to be considered as guests on the podcast. Now, first thing to note is that this video, this these ideas are mainly for musicians and bands because that's what I get the most requests from. Um, as you know, the podcast is uh, really seeking out, um, talking, having conversations with bloggers, podcasters, you know, bookers, club owners, musicians, bands, uh, videographers, basically anybody that has anything to do with the Seattle music scene, even fans, um, and uh, you know, all those types of things, managers, all those, anybody that's involved can have, has a perspective on what it means to be a part of the Seattle music scene because this podcast, the conversations that I'm going for are basically my tagline is discovering and celebrating the culture of the Seattle music scene and culture. What does that mean? So it's really great. A big part of that is just getting the stories of, of the artists and bands and things like that. But it's like trying to go below the surface of it all. So keep that in mind as you're um, thinking about being on the podcast. I wrote down a couple of things and this is free form, just like my podcasts are, just like my video journals are. Um, all of which, you know, well, the video journals can be found on the same YouTube page that this is on. And the podcast, of course, is at WOTSpodcast.com. So to start off, if you want to be considered as a guest on Word on the Street, things to keep in mind. The first thing and foremost and really the biggest thing is you need to be a part of an original music project of some kind. Not interested in, in talking about cover bands um, or anything like that or even so much as genre, really intense genre bands. I'm, I'm looking for the rock bands that play Monday through Saturday night at uh, the bars and things like that and and more. DJ culture as well is very much invited, DJ culture. But, um, but it's original kind of sounds. It's original ideas I'm looking for. The neck, you know, just kind of, but it's past, present, and, and future in a sense. So keep that in mind. I, I think that was kind of vague but original bands think about it if you're an original band project then you probably qualify the three things underneath that that are the things that i look for when i am when somebody sends me a request says hey we want to be on the podcast and i don't have any clue who they are and it's a, like a total cold call the three things that i do and i do investigate i don't they, they'll send me a note and I'll go, okay, and then I do my investigations and I find out more about them. Hopefully they send links and things like that, but I also do my own investigation because they don't always send me all the things that I want. So these here's some things that you could send me right away. First thing is audio quality. Do you have audio quality that you can get behind um, and just really believe in? Do you have some kind of recording of your stuff that you're like, you are super proud of? That's the first thing to do and how to get that to me um, I'll say this right now, I'm not, basically if you use Reverb Nation as your primary source for anything music oriented, that already I'm going to be like, ah, they're not really taking themselves seriously because Reverb Nation is the worst social network for musicians there is. You need to have your music on Bandcamp, you need to have something on YouTube, which I'm about to get to in a second, and you need to have a Facebook profile or something like that. Those are the three main things you need to have so that people can do research on your project. Having your own website is good as well. However, you know, that's another thing. What maybe I'll talk about in a second. Um, audio quality. Have really good audio quality, hopefully with a link to a Bandcamp or SoundCloud or something like that because those audio players work really well. They're easy to use and this thing, you're allowed to listen to the whole track, you know, I won't get into Reverb Nation because I've done that before. Maybe I'll put a link to my rant about Reverb Nations in the in the sub in the com whatever it's called the the rest of the info down there you know down there. Anyways, um, so audio quality first and foremost have great audio quality. Second thing very important um, and not much lower because for me 
the live experience, it's not good enough just to have good audio quality. You have to bring it when you have a stage, when you play a show. You have to look and sound like you know what you're doing. And so, second thing to consider is having something that represents your live show online, a YouTube video, is the best thing to have. And have it be decent, have it be good. Um, most of us, I know, only can do one camera kind of stuff. You know, if you're serious about your music, I really highly recommend doing a three camera um, video. Shoot, bring three cameras next time you play live. Set up three cameras and then, you know, edit them between them because that, that one stationary camera oftentimes does not sell your band. So consider that. For me personally, I can look past that and I can go, okay, I listen to their audio on their Bandcamp, and then I go and and ch found their live show on YouTube and, and watch a few of their videos and said, oh, okay, this is what they do. It looks like okay, they okay they're bringing in enough, or maybe they're not bringing in enough, or they don't have any videos. That's you know, if you don't have any videos on YouTube, I'm already gonna be like, I'm mm, not really interested because I'm not interested in talking to better musicians. And this brings me to my third point: be a part of the community, and that's easy to tell. A, already, if you have, you know, live videos, you're out there playing shows and being part of the community. But what I mentioned before, having a Facebook and showing your social presence, being a part of it, showing the, you know, flyers that you've been a part of, interacting with other bands, how people are interacting with you on social, very important. And I look at that and I dig down and go, okay, they're active in the community. So those are the three big things that I look for in terms of who I want to have on this podcast. And that's, again, just to re restate, this is for the musicians. This is for the bands. Now, there are a few X-Factor things. I didn't write down what they are. Hopefully, I'll remember as I go. Um, the first X-Factor thing is if you're a friend of mine already, that's going to go a long way. So, you know, if you're friends, if you know, it's, it plays back into the community. You can become my friend by interacting with me when I'm out in the community. I post all the time where I'm going to be and things like that. And especially if you come to one of my shows. I play in a band called The Zim and A-Rock. That would be a great way for you to get on my good side and be a part of Word on the Street. So it's a become, be, become my friend, essentially. Um, so that's one X-Factor thing. The next X Factor thing to consider is if you, as a band member and as a musician, also do something else, like have your own blog, have your own podcast, have some other thing going on, you know, are a part of some organization that supports local music in some way or whatever, have, there's some other angle going on as well as your music. Because I love to talk about everything that's going on and that would be, that would just be another thing to help you get on this podcast. Third thing, um, or another thing of the X Factor thing is making sure if you're not, if you haven't listened to one of the podcasts, then that is wrong. You need to have listened to the podcast so you understand what it is you're getting into. If you are all one way with your interaction, your own personal, what you're trying to accomplish with your music and stuff, if you're all pushing out your ideas without taking in what else is going on in the community and we're on the street is part of the community is for the community is what it is all about so you need to be you know it's a very very goal very long way if a you've listened to the podcast b you've interacted with the podcast in some way you shared the links on facebook and things like that you've been a part of this community you've talked to me you've sent me messages and you've done different things and shown your support and this is a good time to add that, you know, sharing once and just like emailing me once and sharing the podcast once isn't good enough. It it may take me a few months to get you on the podcast and I, I drop these every Thursday. So if there's plenty of opportunities for you to keep telling your friends and your your network about what's going on about this community. So that'll go a really long way if you are actually know what it is you're getting into and being a part of it and actually want to be a part of it. A lot of times I do this myself. Sometimes I reach out and, and I am one way about things. I want to be on somebody else's show or I want to do something, but I don't really know a lot about that show. And so, you know, because of this process, I've been doing, okay, I need to know what it is I'm getting into. So that's just one of these things. So I think, I think that really does it. Those are the main points of um, what it takes to be on We're On The Street Podcast. So, you know, get, get a hold of me, reach out to me. You know, you know how to do it. We're on the street podcast.com. Um, we're on the street 
or WOTSpodcast.com is the website. Word on the Street Podcast at Hotmail.com is the email. You know, I'm on all social places, so anywhere I have a social network, you can interact with me or the podcast and get my attention. But um, consider the things I just mentioned before you reach out and say you want to be a part of the podcast. So leave it at that, and peace out. I'm the Zim. Word on the street, go.